IGN as we are still at Rage 2014. My name is Grant Hines and Rage 2014, for those of you who don't know, is the biggest uh, games convention on the African continent. And what's paramount to that excitement is that we're with Steve Fulian, who is the game director at Slightly Mad Studios and is working on Project Cars at the moment. And he is here with us at the IGN studio on the floor. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Grant. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Uh, it's an absolute, absolute pleasure. Now tell me a little bit more about Project Cars. The first thing I think everybody wants to know is there's a lot of noise in the car market at the moment. There's Forza Horizon 2, Forza as an industry, GT, uh, especially in the simulator uh, scene. How are you guys, what are you guys doing to stand out? Well, first of all, when you define simulation, what we do to stand out on in that aspect is that most of the noise in the car game space at this point in time is focused on either very arcade, quick get in, get out, 15, 15 minute sort of like gameplay segments, or you have Forza or Gran Turismo, those sort of games, who are more on the simulation side, but more or less in the middle of the field. What we do is we simulate in detail everything, including the cars, the tracks, the weather, whatever you throw at the player it's simulated in detail and accurate to the point of where we have real world drivers who are not affiliated with us at all using it as a practice tool what? to prepare for when they go and race on the real race can you for talk about that yeah absolutely we have we were contacted um, we actually just found out about it because guys started posting youtube videos uh, <laughs> his name's renee rost and he was on the podium at le mans and what he did was he was using Project Cars because we have one of the very few licenses in the world for the Le Mans racetrack and 24 hour um, you know, uh, race yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, event. So what he was doing is because it's so difficult to get track time, he, we have his car in the game. So what he did was he took his car, he took a um, track, he set it up for a 24 no. hour race section and because we in real time simulate the sun movement, the weather, the whole thing. He used it to practice and familiarize himself with at what corner he's going to be when the sun comes up and shines in his eyes no. and the whole thing. And he used that to practice it repeatedly and he went on and got on the podium on the mall. So that's a sort of So you like to credit accurate. you like to credit your, his success to the game? I think a bit of it, yeah, absolutely. What we can credit seriously though is that we allow real world race drivers track time that is accurate enough that they can use it as an alternative. Because here's the thing. Most sports, like soccer or whatever, you can get yourself a soccer ball and practice in the backyard. Yeah. You can't do that with racing. With racing, if you're a, if you're a motorsport driver, it's a 50, 60,000 pound exercise to go to the racetrack with your car and the whole thing. So the only way you can really do it is by a simulation. So what we do is we think that we bring a product to the market that you can play all the way from somebody who wants to do an easy entry level, lots of assists and all that, to the professional race driver can use it. Now, I want, to, I want to talk about that. If a professional race driver can use this for a, a real life test run and uh, gear themselves up for that, how easy or how accessible will this game be for people like myself who, quite frankly, can't drive a race car? I struggle with most middle range yeah, sims as you, yeah. talk, as you yeah, describe Grant, that's them. That's a very good question. And what we do is, first of all, when you simulate a car properly, it means that anybody who has ever driven a car, even his beat up old car on the road, should be able to transfer his real world experience into the game and within minutes be driving. If he cannot do that, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Okay. Because then you're not simulating it accurately. Because if you cannot do that, what you can do in the real world in the game within a few minutes, yeah. something's wrong. So what we do is to assist you with that, we every single car in the game is, is accurately simulated to the point of where assists work as well. For example, certain cars have steering assist, have uh, stability control, and so forth. We simulate all of that. On top of that, we add a few things to make it even easier for you. For example, we allow you to have those assists on cars that do not have them normally. You can switch from manual gears to auto gears. You can turn on a line that will help you to show you where you should go. You can even set it to the point of where it will help you brake a little bit and all that. Oh yeah, but that's braking. really yeah yeah that's really entry level sort of stuff. So if somebody who has not driven a car at all <laughs> Picks wants up, to get they this can up do it. or played a game at all, a racing game, then even them they would be able to get in and they would be able to. Our AI system, for example, is extremely detailed in how they race. We try to simulate real opponents. But at the same time, what we do is we allow a, a spectrum of difficulty. For example, you can go and say, 
if you take most difficult at 100%. You can go and say, I have a field of 15 cars. Well, let's say 48, because this is something we do. We're the first console racing game with this amount of detail that hosts 48 cars on the track at the same time. That must be absolute chaos. It's, it's insane. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely insane and intense. And the thing is this, is that's what real racing is like. And unfortunately, previous generations couldn't bring this experience to the, to the player yeah. because it's like you're racing against 10 cars or 16 cars. What the heck? Most races are real world races, 30, 40, 50 cars. So we allow up to 48 cars on the track at the same time on consoles. So what you do is, you know, you have this intensity when you race against AI. Now you have like 38 cars or 48 cars, then in the difficulty you can go say, the lower end of the field run at versus 100% at 20%. Yeah. The higher range of the field runs at let's say 40%. So you have a range of performance, a spectrum there in which you can race. Yeah. So you can tweak that if you want to all your life. We believe that the one thing that has gone now, it's a bygone era, is with every release of a racing game, you put the player in the easiest or rather most basic, slowest plonk of a car yeah, and yeah. you have to work your way a up. Beetle. Yeah, exactly. Now you work your way up, you spend hundreds of hours playing this game. The next edition comes out and you have to start all over again. Well, maybe you get some money or whatever for having done all that trouble. We go the other way and we say, you know what, this is your game, this is motorsport. You pick where you want to start. If Can I start, start with the Zonda? If you want to start in LMP1, there you go. If you want to start Zonda, road, um, road track, if you want to take that out on more life, there you go, go for it. And damage? There's real damage on the car? Absolutely. Our, again, we keep everything up there. Every, the authenticity is in the damage as well. You can scale it again. You can say no damage. You can say visual only. So you like the effect of your, you know, car getting smashed yeah. up. But you don't want it to affect the handling of the car. But if you put it on <laughs> real, then it actually does everything. So what happens if your car is basically like a sandwich? Does it carry on driving? Yeah, yeah. You you can right of your car. You get to the point of where your race director will say, you know what, retire the car, pull off the track. <laughs> it's over. Race is come over. Come home. Come home. Race. And the same thing happens with the AI. You can, if you have a hard enough crash, a wheel will fall off. You'll, you know, you'll damage the aero, and then it will affect your downforce. So yeah, the car yeah. won't handle the same way anymore. You damage the suspension. It affects the steering. The brakes. You can overheat them too many times, and you can break one of them. Yeah. You know all of that. So we simulate all of that. Again, that's how real-world race drivers can then use our simulation to practice on the racetrack because the cars and everything feels like the real world. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Sure thing, Dron. Uh, yeah. Um, maybe maybe I'll be converted to racing, uh, you know. Well, I'm come try it out. We're right over there. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe I'll come so. try it out at the booth, yeah. Bye -bye. Okay. Thank you, IGNers. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, there'll be way more rage coverage coming up in following videos. Make sure that you follow. Let us know what you think of Project Cars. How do you think it's yes, going to stand up do. against uh, Forza Absolutely. and GT? Uh, make sure you can comment in the comment section below. Uh, until then, until the next video, cheers, guys. Cheers.